My name is Omaru Sandamado. This is City TV. My guest is John Dumelo, actor, parliamentary hopeful, Ayawaso West Wogon. In 2014, uh, I've seen somewhere that you hit what? One million is it oh. followers or likes on Facebook? <coughs> yeah. Is that what fooled you into thinking you can be a politician because you have one million people on social media? You think you can get one million in the constituency? No, I mean, I mean now it is 5.1 million. Oh, it has on, improved. Yeah, yeah, it has. Uh, are these real human beings or no? These robots? are real. No, these are real. Okay. These are real. Are uh, some of them in your constituency? Yes, some of them are. But um, I do not base my entry into politics on the numbers I have on social media. Mm. You know, it's about doing something on the ground you know social media can fool you i mean yes i have five million on facebook i have three million on instagram i have one million on twitter you know but it, that doesn't mean that oh these guys would vote for me because i'm standing for a position mm. in ghana mm. it is about me doing things to affect them positively on the ground okay. and for them to realize that oh this is what john is doing in ayahuasca West. we saw it on social media <clears throat> i think he's doing well Let's give him a chance, and so on and so forth. So that 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 my numbers on 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 social media is not something that. But uh, are these numbers you are commercializing? Are you making money from these numbers, or is it just for the fans? I mean, it's just for the fans. It's just to relate to them, and so on and so forth. Uh, I mean, I am not commercializing the numbers. You know, um, some brands come and then they want to use me because of you know. The, the numbers I have because having those numbers on on social media mm -hmm. is, is almost the same as for lack of a better expression owning a television because mm -hmm. if, I, if, I, if I post a video you can have three four hundred thousand views and and that that translates to having a TV station and mm -hmm. so you know mm -hmm. um, brands come and they say oh hey John I want to use the social media and so on and so forth and so that's that's the little that I do when did you decide I wanted to enter politics what motivated you I think I decided in 20, 2016. That took you a long time. Yes. For someone born in 84. Yeah, yeah. 2016. 2016? Yeah. As recent Th as three years ago three years or four ago. years ago? Three years ago, yes. What happened? <coughs> when, was it a journey to Damascus moment? What, what may have happened? Actually, the journey to Israel. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know. <clears throat> um, I, I started involving myself into active politics in 2012. Okay. When I campaigned for the NDC in 2012, but was this a contract to campaign for the NDC as movie people, or it was something you did out of genuine love for NDC? It was something I did out of genuine love. But when when they see that you are doing something out of genuine love, they put you in a group and okay. say, "Okay, it's it's like you being a lawyer," and they say, "Oh, they, we know this guy is you know campaigning for the NDC. Let's put him under the the legal, the, team. The legal team and so on and so forth." And so I started campaigning in 2012 for the NDC. Uh, but before that, I mean, I grew up in an in an NDC family. Oh, okay. I mean, I mean, my dad is NDC. <coughs> my grandfather is actually Obeda Sama, who is the former Attorney General and Foreign Affairs Minister. And so I grew up in that sphere. Obeda Sama is your grandfather. Yeah. Your mother's my, side. Or your I, actually, side? my my grandmother's brother. Okay. So okay. my father's uncle. So you're from Likpe? <coughs> yeah, I'm from Likpe Bala. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's you speak you speak the Sekwele. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you rattle a few lines? I speak ever Tongu and uh, maybe. Well, I, uh, I speak. I speak. And I'm not, but I'm not sure I can speak that one. I speak Sekwele. Yeah. Yeah. It's Guan. Okay. It's Guan. So, so, so these are Guan people. These are Guan people. So li, um, <coughs> that's what they call what? Likpe. Sao. Yeah, yeah, Sao. Likpe so, Akpafu Lolobi. Yes, yes, and, yes, yes, um, yes. Yeah, Likpe Akpafu Lolobi. Um, yeah. Santro Coffee. Santro Coffee as well. I yes. See, Akbafu as well. Akbafu. Yes. <coughs> so this has always so there's always been an NDC something in your house. Yes. And then in 2012, it was a natural choice for yeah, you. Yeah. You didn't have any difficulty, hesitation. No, no, no. So yeah, 2012. Was it John Mahama who attracted you to NDC or NDC that attracted you to NDC? I mean, based on the fact that I grew up in an in an, in an NDC home and stuff. Of course, my mom is MPP. Uh, but your mom not, is MPP. She's not. She's not like a. Typical, typical strong, in, but she's, she's a sympathizer of the MP because my grandfather, who is an Ashanti uh, from Tetrim, he was an MPP. He was a UP guy, okay. you know, but he died early, so I, we didn't <coughs> develop that side. But mm. and so we, I come from two different sides. But um, yeah, so it was NDC me, and so it was okay. I'm attracted to NDC. Let me see what I can contribute to the NDC. But why in 2012? What was significant about 2012? Because in 2012, the campaign season had started. 
And so I was called upon also based on, you know, my little post here and there. And then some people identified, ah, but John said, he'd be NDC guy, so let's rope him in. I did a few comments. So was this the Mills NDC or the Mahama NDC? This was the Mills, the ending part of the Mills NDC transitioning into the Mahama NDC. Was it the personalities that attracted you? And I've asked this question, but you didn't answer. So yes. was it the personalities <laughs> or the party? I just wanted to be sure. It, it, it was both. Okay, was so both. Mills attracted you to the NDC? Both, yes. So Mills, Mahama, and, and other personalities. Who in the, in the NDC harvested you? Who in the NDC? I think it's the NDC body as a whole. I, I, I cannot was there any guy who said, you know, or was there any guy who was sent officially to reach out to no, you? No, 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 no. There was, there, was, there, was, there was no guy sent officially to you. I mean, but because I have so many NDC friends and then I have other people as well that I look up to in the NDC. And so everything just adds up one step, uh, you know, at a time and then... You but you know. had never <coughs> done politics, not even student politics. Um, I... I I stood for Queen's Hall. I stood for secretary and I lost. In the you election. were in the hall called Queen's, Queen's Hall. Hall? Yes. I stood for secretary and I lost. And then I stood for the um, organizing secretary for CESA, Civil Engineering Students Association, and I won. Um, and so those are the two. two I'm sure they are, they are heads that you won their, their thing, but you never practice. You don't even. Uh, <laughs> yes. But at that time, I remember so well that election, the CESA election. Mm. Charlie, you, you can't be complacent in elections because <laughs> whenever I enter the classrooms, oh, John, forget, ah, John, but we know you already, ah, yeah, yeah, and I won by just eight votes. Wow, and you're looking at everybody like, really? Yeah, fear the, that's all the fear delegates, it started from it's that been time. in your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, so, again, I'm still interested. Why in 2012, in that time of your life, you decided that, all right, politics, I mean, movie, hold on a moment, I want to do politics. Why politics and why NDC. I mean, aside the fact that your family and relatives have been in there, why politics first of all? I, I think I've always had... You're not worried that politics was too bloody? No, because when you're in the entertainment industry, it's pretty bloody as well. Okay. I mean, you have your fair share of controversies and so you develop a thick skin. And so moving into politics or transitioning into politics is, is, a, is, is an easy thing. I mean, I speak to a lot of people and they say, Charlie John, I can't do politics because of it's bloody and you know, it's controversies and stuff. But I said, look, I, because I'm from a, an arts industry, I'm used to these things. And so transitioning into politics is pretty much easy. Did you ever weigh NDC versus MPP to make your choice or you just went with NDC? No, I just went with NDC. You didn't care what MPP had to offer. You didn't care that they had free SHS on the board. In 2012? Yes, it was uh, mentioned. In yeah, it was mentioned, but we also were mentioning so many things as well. Progressively free SHS, that's yes. what you were mentioning at the yes. time. Yes, so we were mentioning other things at the time, and so you just get aligned. I got aligned. You, were, you <coughs> weren't concerned that your party at the time had been associated with so much corruption? No. That they were singing songs for your party, saying that you were corrupt, and yeah. so on. You still was, yes. you were willing to associate your brand with that? Yes, but, but the fact that they were saying that we're corrupt, that doesn't mean we're corrupt. How come when John Muhammad won in 2013, he didn't give you a job in his <laughs> government? I, I wasn't, I was, I wanted to, it's about, I want the government to come into power. I'm not looking for a remuneration. I'm not looking for, oh, right now that I've campaigned for them, so what is in it for me? Are you going to give me a position? No. I, you my, never lobbied? No. You were not approached? No. I mean, I never lobbied. I, I really, I, my job in my heart was to be able to campaign for the NDC in 2012, which I did after they won. It's cool. What Back was your relationship with John Mahama like? I mean, my relationship with him now is perfect. Just as he's friends with other people. Yeah. You, you vibe? Yeah, we vibe. You talk? Yeah, we talk. Does he pick your thoughts on some IT issues? <laughs> he picks the thoughts of everybody on Does he issues. pick your thoughts? He, he picks the thoughts of everybody. Does he pick John DeMello's he thoughts? He picks the thoughts of everybody. Did he pick your thoughts on the movie industry in preparing his manifesto, for instance? Um, we have a creative arts board and a, and a tourism board as well, which, uh, or a little committee, a private committee, which we've met once or twice to be able to put together the things that will be able to help the creative and the tourism industry. So <coughs> you're never given a job and you still went back on the campaign trail to campaign in, in 2016. 2016. Yes. How did you feel when you lost? Ah, I mean, as an NDC person, I was sad. I was sad that we lost, but um, every, I, I, I see it as everything happens for a reason. Did you see it coming? I, every, I, I, Okay, at what point did you think or know that you were going to lose as a party? I think it was on that day. It was oh. on that day when I realized that... December 9? 
When no, the December the 7th. Okay, the day of the election. The day of the elections. That's when I realized that, wow, there are, people are not going out to vote. People in our strongholds are not going out to vote. And so based on that, Charlie, I don't think this thing will go on, go on well for us. But prior to that, um, I remember I was in Cape Coast and, I, I, you know, because <clears throat> my mom is from Cape Coast as well, so I was there having a conversation. Somebody made something up passing that, hey, if you are WBC, you're in market in Ukraba, still are in Tuaba, Mawan, and all those things. And so yeah. I realized that. Kotokraba. Kotokraba market. So I realized that to some extent, the infrastructure that we did there, I don't know what happened, but some of the people were not happy. So that's when I was like, mm, okay, maybe we need to work more or we need to work harder to be able to change the minds of the people that love the infrastructure that we built. We are, building, we are building it so that it can help livelihoods. It can help you as a market woman. The roads that we've done, it can help you to be able to move from point A to point B quickly and so on and so forth. Then again, I was, uh, of course, I speak to a lot of people. I, there's this organizer that I spoke to and he said, uh, John, I'm a very quiet Oh, I'm a but still, uh, but still, uh, but still, uh, but I said, but the road that they've done, it's to help your community. But when you speak to such people, of course, they are entrenched. I know where they are coming from. They are typical MPP people. And so, but now, speaking to the same person, clearly he's told me that, John, he's made a mistake. Who do you blame for your defeat? I don't blame anybody. Nobody? I, I, I don't blame anybody. There was this theory <coughs> of whether you should blame the, the horse or the jockey. Which one do you blame? And the horse is, oh, the horse is NDC, the jockey is John Mahama. No, I don't blame anybody. Really? It we has, we all should take the blame. No, as, you can't as, all take the we blame. We can. We can all we can all take the blame. No, there were specific people who were giving specific <coughs> tasks to there were national executives, there was a flag bearer, there was a running mate. These are people you should hold responsible, shouldn't you? We shouldn't if somebody has come to claim responsibility, that's fine. But for me, we should be responsible for our own defeat as NDC members. I can't say that oh this person was responsible or that person was responsible. No. Okay. Let's test your knowledge of the NDC, the party you want to stand on this <coughs> ticket. What is the NDC? If you went to Germany and someone asked you in German, what NDC is, what would you say? You mean in the German language? Don't say it in German language. Okay. Please speak English. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> I mean, we are social democrats. And based on how the party was formed from the PNDC era to the NDC era, you know, I think it's a, it's a grassroots based party. Like I said, social democrats, we believe in, you know, um, creating policies and so on and so forth for a lot of people on the ground or in the base and that is reflecting in our supporter or our support base now you mm -hmm. realize that a lot of the NDC members are for lack of a better expression people down there the masses who are down there because we don't believe a lot in intellectuals and so on and so forth like some other people do believe in we believe that look, let's so you don't want in. intellectuals in your party we do want we have intellectuals but you don't believe in them we believe in them but so I'm just saying see? I'm just saying that we start from the bottom up but others explain, start, explain that. Bottom up. I mean, in economics, you have micro and macro. Mm -hmm. One of them deals with bottom up. The other de deals with up and down. But mm -hmm. we deal with the bottom up approach. We are gathering the masses and we are moving up to the top of the pyramid. So you deal <coughs> with ignorant, unexperienced people first before you deal with I, I wouldn't say experienced that. technocrats no. next. I wouldn't say we deal with ignorant, unexpected people. We deal with everybody. Mm -hmm. But we start from the base up. So you do try and error at the bottom? We don't do try and error at the bottom. Explain, I'm still lost. No, we do try. We don't do try. What I'm trying to explain to you is that NDC is a party for everybody. We don't... Say, oh, we're a lawyer. We're a doctor. MPP doesn't do that either. Wow, they do that. There are party offices everywhere. You can walk in and pick up a card. You can go to any rally of your choice. All you need is blue, white, and red. Yeah, and but when, when they are sharing positions, it's about... Oh, Papa, are you sure? When you are... What's your name? So, so, and so. Why are you sure? Yeah. I'm, Can you give me an I'm, example? There are so many examples. Give I mean, me just yeah, I mean the, the NDC did a lot of, uh, we've done a lot of press conferences. And if you look at the family and friends tags, mm -hmm. I mean, come on. You, you, it, it, give the, me one person in the MPP who you think was given the job he was given because of who their father is or what level of uh, book long they are, I can't they give you one. There are so many. Of course, we all know that the, the, the president is surrounded by his family and his friends. Are you sure? How many of his family and a, a, friends a, a are? A lot of them are there. Mention three. A lot of them are there. Mention three. Yeah, a lot of them. You have the, the secretary. You have the his finance. executive secretary. Yes, and you have the finance minister. Should I continue? 
There are so many. I give you three. So you no, still so have there are so, still that's, have what saying, that's what I'm saying. There are so many. There are, are you, so many. Are you sure you're not just saying something uh, because everybody's saying it? You don't have proof for it. Are they not their relatives? Yeah. What is wrong with that? Nothing. But if you promised in January 2016 that you're not going to do family and friends and then you come to power and you're doing family and friends, there's everything wrong with that. So NDC doesn't check who you are before they give you a job? No. So it's about competence. It's about whether you're qualified for the job or not. And that is what we do. <clears throat> this is still face-to-face -face on City TV. My guest is uh, John Dumelo, and um, we're just testing his understanding of the NDC. Uh, before he leads the party. Well, he already is supposed to be leading the party in the Ayawaso West Wagon constituency, but how would he succeed? You are into philanthropy? Yes. Why? I started my philanthropy about 10, 11 years ago. I remember the first donation I did was in a village in Wa, you know, and um, that's when we started. I've done jobs there. And there's, there's something funny that happened at Wa. I remember when I was going to Wa, the Fufu so Solar Road wasn't done. Mm -hmm. And the car that I was driving broke down like four or five times. And it took me about four hours to get from Fufu so to Wa, which now takes less than two hours. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, I mean, this is just by the way, but so when people are talking about the road infrastructure, there are certain roads in Ghana, important roads in Ghana that, of course, the NDC did. But coming back to my foundation, yes, I started in 2008. 10, and since then, I've been doing a lot of charity work in Ghana, in Nigeria, in Guinea, in um, Ivory Coast, in Zambia, in Cameroon, and other African countries. Upon all of this, if I Google you, one of the first stories that pops up <coughs> is that you stole a government V8. Mm, that's when, what, that's what I was doing. When Jamal left office. Yeah, that's what I also heard. Why did you steal a V8 <laughs> if you have so much money that you're sharing? I, I don't have so much money that I'm sharing. I'm just, the little I have is what I share. Yeah, um, but it means you're content. That's why you're giving what you are, the leftover. No, it's not about that. It's about having what you have, the little that you have and sharing it. Was That's, that why you stole the V8? No, to sell I mean, and share with everybody? I mean, I mean, look, every sensible person would say that, ah, okay, so if, if you are given a, a vehicle, if you are given a vehicle, and then there's change of government, and then you can see them grabbing cars left and right, and then I am still driving a car that I supposedly stole, I wouldn't be driving the car that I supposedly stole. No, you are not driving. According to the report, you had taken it to a sprayer shop, you were spraying it, specking it. They say you brought stuff from Dubai to spec it and pimp it, maybe, if you mm -hmm. want to use a street language. Okay, so let me explain. And so in 2016, um, a company that imports vehicles for the government approached me and said, look, John, we have some leftover V8 that the agency that we decided to import for, they said they don't want it again because of some other reason. And so are you interested in buying one? I said, yes, uh, of course, I'll buy one. And so I bought one. Um, and then that was what I was using. How much did you buy it for? Oh, no, I, I, I can't disclose. But no, at that, at that, no, but at that time, it was at that price. If you uh, have been <coughs> trolled and dragged, yes. you should be able to provide as much information to yes. clear your image as yes, you can. Yes, but I bought it. I bought the car You have cash. You have it in your name? Uh, yes, I bought How the car. No, the it wasn't, no, 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 it wasn't my name. I bought it. Um, the reason being that... You paid with your money? Yes. But it was not in your name? Yes, it wasn't The receipt was not written in your name? No, the receipt... Explain how that works. Okay. So when you import something for the government, it is imported, when you, when you check everything, it says imported for so-so-and-so agency. Mm -hmm. And so at the time I bought it, of course, we're in government and everything, and, and I didn't finish paying for it. And so I, I told the guy, you know what, when I come and give you the balance, then we can do the change of ownership and so on and so forth, which we agreed, which, I mean, I think every businessman in Ghana would do that, or every, anybody doing that would do that. And so that was what happened. And then... So all along, this was what it was. And then we lost, and I was still driving this car. And then- Which in, you did not own. What percentage of the which, amount did you pay us which at the time? I, I paid over 50%. Okay. So, and you know, I mean, it's just but like- But you can't give us how much it, it that- just, No, no, I can't. <laughs> it's that just would, like- That it, would make people suspicious of your story. No, I mean, it, I, I bought it. More, yeah. I paid more than 50% of it. At, the, at that time, the value of the vehicle, 
if I bought this suit and I paid for it, I should be able to tell people that this suit Yes, I but it. everybody can easily probably Google the price of a V8 at that time in 2016 and say, okay, maybe it was Why do you want me to rely on Google when the man is here? Uh, yes, but uh, so that they know that this is the actual price. Okay. If I own a property yes. and someone wants to take it from me, that would be theft. But when they came, they so, said, so you, they said you begged them. Yes, that's what I'm explaining. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so we won power. I was lost. Oh, sorry, we lost power. Um, I was still driving this vehicle around. And then I realized that, look, I've used this vehicle so many times across the country, outside the country, and so on and so forth. There are some scratches and damages on it. So let me just um, spray it and let me just, you know, service the vehicle. And so I took it to a shop in Accra. In Accra. Open. In Accra. For them to service it. And then... Were you servicing or changing the car? No, I mean, we are, we are, it's body works and everything. And so I, I think I, even at that point in time, when I was speaking to the guy, I said, oh, Charlie, the scratches and things, let's try. And then the guy said, oh, why don't you respray it to a different color? I said, okay, that's fine. No problem. We can just respray it. And so that is what happened. And so one day I was at home and I got a call and said, oh, John, um, some people there from National Security, they say, you for come. I said, okay, no problem. So I got there. And then they said, okay, so this vehicle is for the national security. I said, okay, can you explain to me? Then they put in the chassis number, and then in the chassis number, it said imported for the national security. No problem. I said, okay, fine, no problem. Then I called the guy that sold it to me. I said, oh, boss, this is what their people are saying, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> then he said he'll get back to me, but he wants to deal with them. Then, so at that point in time, it's like, oh, hey, this vehicle is for them, blah, blah, blah. And then they took the vehicle away. A vehicle you have not fully paid for. Yes. A vehicle you know very well belong to the government of Ghana. Yes. You took it to a spray but see, shop but and you were changing the color. No, but you that see. That would amount to but ill yes, intent. Yes, yes. But you see, mm -hmm. at that point in time when I was paying for the vehicle, it, it's not a matter of it's for the government or not. It's a matter of, okay, John, when you finish paying, we'll just do the change of ownership. Yeah, but it was a government car. Yes. You know, there are special duties on government exactly. cars and so on. But so I, you were benefiting from your association with the government. No, but I paid for it. Yeah, but you have not given us how much, so we can't even prove <laughs> yes, but you I, have the receipts. Yes, but I've paid for it. Yeah, so if you paid for something, yes. you should fight for it. You don't give up exactly. easily. And so, and so fighting for it is between me and the person or the people. The company. The company. It was funny that, that was mentioned. The person mm -hmm. or the people mm -hmm. that sold the vehicle to me. Did you take them on? And so I spoke to them and they said, John, you know what? We'll sort it out. After two, three months, I paid my balance and I bought a new car. So they gave you a new car? I bought a new, I paid the balance and I bought a new car. I don't get it. You gave the balance to the company and they gave you a new car. And I bought a new car, yes. No, you didn't buy a new car. I mean, so, I, yes, it's a so new they car. Gave you, so they gave you a new car to yes. replace the one that was taken by the government. Perfectly. Was it a V8? <laughs> yes. I see. You don't think that what you were doing was fraudulent? No, at all. There's nothing fraudulent about it. If, if, you mentioned if, the if, former first lady. I never, mentioned, to the report. I never mentioned anything in any report. I, at the time the national security came to take the car, I didn't write any former report. I didn't write anything down. They just came and they took the vehicle away. So the, all the stories you read, I mentioned former first lady, I mentioned this, I mentioned this, I mentioned this. They were all false. If you couldn't be trusted to hand over a government vehicle that was given to you, even when you were not a government appointee. Can we trust you, for instance, if you became a minister of state, that you will not repaint the house, the government bungalow that will be given to you and I can't, pay half I, of it? I, I can't repaint it because at that point in time, it's a government bungalow. It yeah, but the car was a government vehicle but too. But I had paid for it. Yes, I'm saying it. So, there's, so, there's, so there's, say, say Mahama wins there's, there's, in 2020. Let me, let me, give me a second. Yes. Mahama wins 2020, yes. gives you minister for something. Yes. Um, maybe anything. Yes. And then, is there a ministry you hope to be a minister? Nah, nah, okay. Nah. Anything. And then you're given a government bungalow. Then you go and pay 20% or 50% deposit and say you want to own this bungalow. And then you start painting it. It's yeah, the but, same scenario. Yes, but at the time you start paying it, the mm. process for ownership begins. If and you, so you are, you are 
you are you are asked you can do whatever it is you want to do to it that's not true that if you true. don't pay it's not yours no it's like you buy a land mm -hmm. when people who sell land yes they say oh pay 20 percent and start development yes Th that is it that that's a condition but, but you see because you were in government and associated to the i wasn't government, in government you were associated with the I government i wasn't in government yes you should not have bought a government vehicle because things would have worked easily for you and you knew that this was state property there's a difference if you are dashed a vehicle and mm. it is it is a yeah, for now for now on my show yes it stands that you were dashed no you haven't told us no. how much you paid no. for it at that point in time mm. the price of the vehicle is there for everybody and it's so see. difficult for you to mention that price and you're not <laughs> going to tell it to us now and even though you've paid look, the vehicle look, three years on you yes. still don't want to give us a date no. you don't think that would affect you it in is, any way it is not going to affect people you. still mock if, if you, you in fact to... your colleague in the industry samini yes. was out and about calling you out for umaru for, if for you want to know if you want to know the price of a vehicle at that point in time it should be between 90 to 100 thousand dollars so how much of that did you pay i paid more than 50 percent of that which will take us to what more than 50 percent samini said we'll never forget you yes we'll never forget your view yes are you yes. hurt no i i i uh, as a matter of fact after that i had a i had a wonderful discussion with him and he tweeted after that and says you know what john we are entrusting you as the youth go there and don't fail us. And so um, I, I don't see anything wrong with that. The Director of Transport and Logistics at the Flagstaff House, that is Odini um, Hunana Opong, had said at the time that you'd be referred to Martin Amidu, the Special Prosecutor. Did the Special Prosecutor ever invite you over this vehicle? No. Never? never. Has any security agency ever invited you over this? No. You've never been? Never. You've never been made to write any statement? Never. So the vehicle is gone, you it's found gone. your new vehicle, and it's over. Exactly. There's a publication, let me read it for you, by Bridget Azore Yora for Graphic, and it was killed from Kasapa FM, 28th August 2019. Quote, in an interview on Accra Bay's Kasapa FM on Wednesday, August 28th this year, Mr. Dumelo indicated that he currently does not, quote, even have a dime left on me for the next round of campaign activities, unquote. You don't have a dime. That was then. You were flat. That was then. Where did you get all the money to all of from all of a sudden that you are moving from community to community, sharing money? I don't share money. No, I don't share money. You don't share money. No. What do you I, share? I've never. You've never. Nobody has ever seen me share money. What do you share? I share the essentials that people need. You use money to buy them. Yes. So, but that's not sharing money. Where did the money come from to buy <laughs> all those essentials? Oh, people day. My pockets today, God day. No, yes, it doesn't work like that it in politics. Like that. Where is your source of your money? My source of money is from benevolent people who come and say, John, get one CD, get two CDs, get three CDs, and use it to support your campaign. Are you serious? Very How serious. How do they do this contribution? How can we track it so that oh, we there's, are, no, there's so no. we cannot say it was when you were close to John Muhammad that he possibly gave you one sack load that you went to keep. No, I mean, head. I mean, I mean, that is that is that is totally false. Yeah, the first I didn't say that's the, what the case is. I'm just saying, what? How can you prove that that's not what it is? If people said that was it was. Yeah, but people, people, if people say that, where's the proof? How do the people pay the one CD to you? Do they send it via Momo or they drop it in your? No, account? they. I mean, these are friends. These are personal friends who come to me. How and many say, rich friends do you have? It's not about. Being, it's not about being rich. Mm -hmm. It's about being content with what you have and sharing the little that you have. And so, if tomorrow you call me and say, John, come and get 500 CDs to support your campaign, I'll gladly take it. And so, putting together. 200 people to give you 500 Ghana CDs. That's, that's money. You're on social media sharing money. I don't, I, I'm not on social media. I never share money. You've never, nobody has ever seen me share money. You don't distribute money? I don't. You if, don't. If, if I've ever distributed, somebody should bring me evidence and say, John, we saw you giving somebody one CD or two CD for vote. Never. But you distribute the essentials which you use that money to That people need, yes. And, and, and that is what politicians do. How much money did you put aside for your own campaign? This campaign, yes. I haven't budgeted how much how I'm much spending. How much have you spent so far? I've spent quite a lot, which I, I, I can't be able to quantify it. Can because, you give me an because estimate? Because I, I do pay as you go every single day. Whatever money that I have, whatever money that friends give me, I use it to buy rice, I use it to, you know, rent excavators to be sealed gutters, I use it to fumigate, I use it to, you know, produce hand sanitizers, I use it to, you know, give, provide loans to market women who at this point in time we've provided um, over 300 market women across the constituency, I mean men and women across the constituency. We budgeted or I budgeted 200,000 Ghana cities to be able to give it to these women and we are doing all these things more small. How much have you spent so far? It's hard to quantify. I haven't sat down to quantify it. You, you have an estimate? I know I don't have an estimate. If you're asked to account for all the CDs you spent, can but, you account for but, each of them? By who? 
by the appropriate quarters who may suspect the, your activities. The, the, there's no appropriate quarters who can come and say that, John, come and account for how much you're spending on your campaign. You don't care that, that, that the money you're spending, if you become an appointee in government, you would be recouping them. And so we should be interested in what you are spending now because whatever you put in, you're bound to I, reap. I mean, to say that I'll recoup it is not, is, is, is not a fair judgment because I've been doing charity work from 2010. So if you're saying that I've been giving rice and oil to widows and so on and so forth and giving essential uh, educational materials, mm. then hoping that, oh, in 2021, I'll get into parliament and mm. recoup. Um, no, I, I don't think that is what What is, is your understanding of the concept of vote buying we don't I, I don't think people buy votes no what's your understanding of that concept that's what i'm saying i don't think people buy votes okay. you 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 cater to the needs of the people who are going to vote for you and so somebody calls you and says john all i need from you is the fact that my relatives in the hospital i need 200 cds to be able to buy medicine mm -hmm. that's no vote buying the person has come to you to say that john this is what it is um, I'm, I'm, I need 200, so please give me 200. Or a group of people will say, John, we need our gutter to be desilted. And so please, can you help us? And so I go get an excavator, I desilt it, I open. That is not vote For buying. an assurance that you get their thumb. For an assurance that this guy, when we vote for him, he's going to listen to us and he's not going to wait for two, three years before he comes to attend to our needs. That is what it is. It's what? about being there for the people. Why do you go to the hostels and the, 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 the rooms of the students on campus? Some uh, people describe that as... Gross and predatory. Thank you. <laughs> it is not. It depends on your, uh, your assessment of it. it. For me, it's about... Uh, when I go to a hostel and a lady comes and says, Hey, John, can I give you a hug? I can't say, Oh, no, don't come and hug me because... Uh, no, I can't do that. Because there was no corona at the time. Yeah, there was no corona at the time. And so... It's like you go somewhere and says, John, give me a high five. And you say, oh, no, I don't want to give you a high five because when I give you the high five. Or you go somewhere and somebody's doing fufu, preparing fufu and says, John, come and help me to pound the thing. And I say, oh, no, if I come and help you and they will take a picture, they will say that I'm pounding fufu for vote, so I don't want to help you. But at that point in time, that is all the person wants for the person to be able to say, I'll vote for John because he came to help me to pound fufu. Is your wife not worried? Uh, about? The gross and predatory? Nah. She's not? Yeah, yeah. Lydia is going to be... Well, she's currently the MP, yeah. and she's going to be on the MPP's ticket. Yes. You think you can beat her, considering ah, right. that this constituency is traditionally MPP? When, when they say it's traditionally MPP, I disagree. Okay, in um, history, it has always swung In history, MPP. yes, but we won in 96 and 92 and 96. But we've come close so many times in winning it, um, especially in 2012, in 2004, in 2008. We've, we've always come close to winning it, and so it's not about it being traditionally MPP. This is not like a Bantama seat or a Mampon seat or a Jusu seat that we know that, oh, this one here is traditionally MPP. There's nothing. But even those seats, we can still bridge the gap. We can still close the gap and be able to win it. So for someone, something like Ayawa Su West, is a seat that the NDC is going to win. I'm not going to win it. It is the NDC that is going to win Do you have a seat. percentage margin you expect to win it by? 54%. Um, the people of Ayawa Su are watching you. Yes. Speak to them. Why should they vote for you instead of Lydia? Um, you see, it's time we change. I, I also West, where it is now, isn't where it's supposed to be. I mean, the MPP have had a seat for so long, and speaking to some of the people, they will say that, John, we've been here for so many years. We've never, we've never, whenever we tell them to come and do something, they never do it. Yet, election time, they'll come and hand money to us and say, oh, vote for us, vote for us. But we are not fools anymore. We want to vote for somebody who is vibrant, somebody who is young, somebody who will know that somebody who has the energy to be able to transform Ayawa Soul West and take Ayawa Soul West to the next level, somebody who will be there for them and somebody who listens. And those are the kind of people, those are the kind of comments that the people pass and those are the uh, assurances that, the, yes, the people are going to vote for me, even including their own MPP people who I meet and I speak to most of the time and says, John, yabre, I feel you have a John Dumelo, NDC PC, I also West Wagon. Thank you for coming on Face to Face. Thank you too. And thank you too for watching Face to Face Returns next week on City TV. My name is Umaru Sandamado. Stay tuned in to City TV.